What's up everyone? Today I'm going to walk you through exactly what all I use to film rollers. I get this question quite literally every single day. I get every question from um, what dampening arm do you use down to what camera do you use down to what gimbal do you use and today I'm going to go through all of that. First thing I need to talk about is the camera setup. We're currently flying a Sony FS5 Mark II. Um, this is a really good camera that you can pick up used for probably $2,500 right now um, for a pretty decent one. A couple years ago, I bought this one brand new and um, in all honesty, it has been an incredible camera. And the lens it comes with is an 18 to 105 power zoom lens. And in most situations people will take this lens off and replace it with something a little higher quality such as the 2470 G Master lens or really anything else that, that Sony produces for the E-mount. Um, I decided to stick with this lens simply because of the fact that it has power zoom. Having power zoom allows us to essentially go anywhere from 18 to 105 millimeters from inside the car. Um, if, we, if we have a subject that is way down the road and we need, to, we need to capture the shot, we can always zoom in all the way in and grab that shot. Um, this has saved us on multiple occasions where having a lens that is too wide would have cost us having to crop way in and sacrificing all of the data in the image. The picture quality is pretty good. It does uh, 4K. 24 frames a second. It does not do 4K 60 unless you get the raw upgrade from Sony, which personally I haven't done yet and don't intend on doing simply because I'm not going to spend $500 on a software unlock. Overall, it's a really good camera. The only thing I really would change about it is the fact that it only does 8-bit color. Um, I'm currently recording this video on my a7 IV with a G Master lens on it. And personally, I believe that this a7 IV does have a better um, image quality than this FS5. Of course, it does not have some of the image stabilization, power zoom, um, and you know some of those other features that make this FS5 perfect for the rig. That is why it lives on the back of my car. This right here is the Freefly Movi Pro. It was released a few years ago to be essentially the ultimate run and gun uh, gimbal for cinema, what I would call cinema use. Um, I picked this up over what I was expecting to get, which was the Ronin 2. Uh, I found this one for a good deal. Uh, they, they retail around $7,500, which is a lot. That is a lot of money. I found this for a little bit less than that. And uh, I have to say I like it. It's a, it's a really good gimbal. It looks good. The only dig I have on it is that it does not come with a controller. The Ronin 2 comes with a controller, um, which makes it a lot more appealing for camera car use. That is why in a lot of my videos you see us using the PS4 controller wired to the transmitter that does come with this gimbal because we do not want to spend the $3,500 that Freefly wants for their Pro controller. Um, I believe this is a little bit of a scam, uh, buyer's remorse kind of thing where I, I really don't like the model that they went with on this gimbal. Um, this, is, this is really a, a competitor to the Ronin 2, and the Ronin 2 retails for $8,000. This retails for $7,500. I would rather have just gotten the Ronin 2 and gotten the joystick pro controller um, out of the box and not had to deal with the PS4 controller. Um, the PS4 controller is made for some good videos on social media, however, Using it is a bit annoying. There is a tricky USB-A, I think it is, USB-A to, it's a, it's a micro USB. There's a, it's a USB-A to USB-C wire, and that wire is pretty tricky to find, and over time, they get kind of trashed. We have to replace the wire once every month or two, and in all honesty, it can be a little bit finicky. Overall, it has been a good purchase. Um, I've flown this camera and gimbal setup for at least 
10 to 15,000 miles on the back of the car, and I have to say, it has done a really good job. Like I said, everything you see on my page from the last year or so has been on this setup, and I'm honestly I'm very happy with it. The next thing I want to talk about is this arm. This is the Pro Aim B530 dampening arm. Admittedly, when I bought it, it was a $2,800 shot in the dark. I had absolutely no idea what it was going to be like because there was not a single review, there was not a single YouTube video on this product. So we bought it and honest to God, after 15 to 20,000 filming miles, it has been incredible. The only thing I've had to, um, I would say do maintenance wise on this gimbal is replace these shocks. Uh, these shocks are what I would say identical to tires on your car in the sense that they are disposable. Over time, after going up and down and up and down and dampening your camera setup for miles on miles on miles, they do go bad over time. So other than that, this thing has been incredible. It um, has really, really impressed me. Um, if, if this is the only, if this is still the only review on this thing on YouTube, um, I, give it, I give it a nine out of 10. It's a really good, um, good, good setup for your, and you know, really any camera I started when I first started uh, rigging cameras onto my car with this, I had my a7 III and Ronin MX under here. And everything from the, the Ronin MX setup to this right here, it's done perfectly. So I, have, I really have no complaints um, at all. This has, been, this has been incredible. Next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the rails. These rails were custom fabricated, um, so in all honesty, I can't give you much of a review as a product consumer sense um, because they're not really on the market. They, uh, they were custom fabricated by a friend of mine. Um, I'm absolutely horrible with numbers and all the math engineering things. So all I can tell you is that it's two six foot poles that are an inch and a half wide and a four footer that's an inch and a half wide. Um, I don't know, they're threaded here on the ends and they're threaded down here at the bottom to go into this um, tow hook setup. But like I said, I'm not an engineer. I don't know all the specifics and the technicals of that. So um, that I will have to pass off to you. However, I will say if you were looking to buy a set of rails that are packaged up, ready to go, um, Pro-Am sells them, Cinemilled sells them, Moto Crane sells them and I'm sure there are other companies out there selling speed rails just like these. So check those out. Um, they're all, they, all, they all do the same job, honestly. It's all, it's all just your structure. Um, not one will really do the job better than the other. It's just about what, um, what works for your budget and what you want to really do. It's, uh, that's kind of up to you. So. The last external piece of equipment I want to talk about is the suction cups. These suction cups are the Moto Crane um, I'm not sure what they're called, but all I know is they're Moto Crane, um, I don't know, car rigging suction cups. I'll pop, up, I'll pop up the link to them right here on the screen. Um, these are incredible for any, you know, any camera car rig that you want to build. Um, I, I've had these for probably seven, eight months now, um, following the Pro-Aim ones that I had in the very beginning and honestly these blow the pro aim suction cups out of the water they um, they're a lot more durable the rubber has a lot more give to it so it uh, it stays on it stays attached on the car a lot easier you don't have to reattach it quite a bit um, and and they look they're 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 honestly really high quality everything about this suction cup is exactly what i want um, i never have to worry about it failing on me at high speeds or whenever we're filming, it's always something I can trust. The Moto Crane guys, in all honesty, are the best. These guys make the best products, everything from the ginormous crane car rigs to everything you know down to what you see on my car. Um, these, the Moto Crane guys are the best. Um, if you can buy anything from them, I highly recommend it. The last piece of equipment I want to talk about is the Atmos Ninja Flame. This is an incredible monitor that um, everybody at this point in time should know about. It, uh, it is, is really the default go-to monitor in the space and I've had absolutely no issues with it at all. It, uh, it records to an SSD card on the, on the back of the, of the monitor. 
Um, that way you're not recording your camera that's on the back of your car. Um, I do not recommend that because, you know, say, say some, some guy goes and rear ends you and your camera goes flying for 100 yards and it does 80 somersaults and gets, you know, destroyed into 10 million pieces. That, uh, that day of footage that you just recorded is now magically vaporized into thin air, which for any paying client is a letdown and you will probably, unless you're good friends with them, not be invited back and I don't recommend taking that risk at all. So get you an Atmos Ninja Flame, record everything to an SSD on the back and I guarantee you, you will never have any problems. Before I close this video up, I do want to show you guys what I was talking about with the PS4 controller. This is the USB-C to USB-A wire um, I was talking about that is pretty uh, disposable. We go through one about once a month, every two months, um, and they're hard to find. You have to go to like Office Depot or just order one online. Um, in all honesty, this is a fun setup. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out for anyone that I ever have flying the camera for me. The only thing I don't like about it is this battery on the transmitter has like no life at all. It lasts maybe an hour and a half and we, at every time we stop or we're anywhere filming, we always plug this in because the battery is really unreliable. Um, and on top of that, you have to make sure that this is charged as well and there is no good way of tracking whether or not your PS4 controller has a lot of battery or no battery. It just kind of is what it is and you just trust that you had it plugged in. Um, there's no you know, way to measure the percentage. It's just, does it work or does it not work? Um, so you have to be very on top of this setup, monitoring this, the wire, and the PS4 controller to make sure there's no hiccups at all and to make sure that you're not gonna have a micro tragedy the day of filming. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you out a lot. None of these videos were really out there um, for this particular setup when I was building it. If this helps you out at all, I'm happy. That is the whole purpose of making this video. Um, any, you know, any, any questions you have about this setup, leave them down below in the comments. Um, I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a good little setup. I'm just gonna hang out here the rest of the day and bounce this thing around. Maybe I'll go drive with it. I don't know yet. Goodbye, party people. Subscribe for all the free info I just gave you.